Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In the last video, we used a slider to control a pulse width modulated output on an Arduino. And we had some questions come in as to why we did a couple things. Our next video will have two sliders that will control two LEDs. And I thought, before I go on, I'm going to answer some of the questions and maybe go over a couple things on variables and make that 12B, and then the next video will be 12C. So this is the Nexion display as we left it. We use the timer to do the work. But somebody asked why we don't just do it when we make the change on the move up here. Instead, because we could have it send as it's changing. But the problem is, is you get too much data too quickly. I'm going to add the code into here so that you can see what I'm talking about. The first thing we have to do is we have to shut the timer so that it never comes on. And we'll grab the code from the timer. And we'll put it in there. So now what we have is whenever we move this timer, it's going to send the values out the serial port. We don't have to do this live. We can do this through debug to show you what I'm talking about. And you're going to see the data is going to appear right here as we adjust the timer. And what you see is that the, the string is really long. It comes so fast that it can't, it doesn't put any breaks in it. So that when the Arduino gets the data, it's going to look at a very long string instead of little chunks of a string. And it's going to make it harder on the other end to interpret. And when we're sending the data every two and a half seconds or every quarter second or even down to a tenth of a second, there just really isn't very many applications that need data sent more frequently. I'm going to go ahead and put it back and we'll load this again and I'll show you what I mean and you'll see that each line only has a few characters. So now as I adjust it, you'll see that the, uh, you can see that the data is only that long and then there are breaks after it. So it gets these two characters and then it gets the next two characters and that makes it a lot easier on the Arduino end to interpret the data and assign it. Remember this will be 68, 79 and see when we get to three data we know but when you get that long string we don't know is it is it a two digit value is it a one digit value you have no way to really break it into its sections and that's why we don't use the on move or the touch move um, portion for this particular thing. There are times where you might use it, but not for this. We just chose not to. The other question that we had was when we do send the data, why do we convert it? Why don't we just send the HO.val? So we're going to go over that next. I'm going to change it so that uh, we are. I'm going to go to the debug again. Okay, now watch down here again as we move the data. When you send it as a value, it knows that you're sending in a number, some sort of number. The Nexion isn't capable of doing decimal points, so it has to be between zero and something. So it automatically converts it into hex and it turns it into four bytes. So it will always come through as four bytes, and that part's nice, but the hex part can make it a little more difficult because you have to then take the these four hex values, you have to switch them around and then interpret them back into an integer. So you'll have to do that conversion anyway. So we chose to do it on our own terms, I guess you could say, whereas we set it up. We know we've got two or three bytes going over. We know that the value is easy to interpret and we just did it that way. What makes this hard is this is actually comes in backwards. So let's say the number was 50. You would have a 35 and a 30, if you remember right, because that's the hex value for 5 and 0. But in this, it gives the lowest over here on this side 
then the next lowest, then the next lowest, and so on. So you have to take these bytes, you have to flip the order, you have to interpret these, and, and you have to do a lot of more manipulation on them. And that's why we just choose to send it as a text value rather than, a, a, uh, than an, an actual value. And I hope that answers those two questions anyway as to why we did it. There's no reason that you can't do it the other way and just manipulate the data in a different way. That's fine. We just chose to do it the other way because we felt it was simpler for, um, for our explanation. I'm going to set everything back to the way it was now. Now I want to go over a couple more things though. In the next video we're going to have two sliders here and we're going to be sending the data back one either at one slider or the other depending on which one we're moving. And what we're going to have to do is add something to the string that we send so that when the Arduino gets it it can parse it out and then it can decide which slider sent the data so it knows which LED to control. When you do that, you want to set up your string so you know exactly how many characters are going to be of value and how many characters are going to determine the object that's sending the, d the device. So you're going to give it a name. It doesn't have to be this name. Since the Arduino doesn't really know what the action is, you can send it in any way you want. So you could call this Bill and Stan or... But what we recommend is that you keep the same number of characters. If your naming convention is going to be two characters then just keep all of them two characters and depending on the size of your project will depend on your naming structure if you're gonna have a 10 page project with, with 100 different items then you probably want to have a three or four um, character naming convention so that way you can keep everything straight because you might have the page number and then like the word itself or something like that we're gonna use four for this and we're gonna set up our number scheme so it's locked because if you remember the numbers came through we'll go ahead and do it one more time on the debug so I can show you as you can see the numbers sometimes were one sometimes there's two characters and if we go all the way up here it can be up to three characters we're gonna we need to define that so it's more established and set And we do that at this last when we do our conversion. So we're going to set this to be 6. So we know that whatever value that comes out of here, it's always going to be the 6 characters. And then we're going to use for our naming convention, we're going to use 4 characters. And what would be really nice is if you could print this, the value, and then if you could just add something like in this case H0, but we're going to do something, we'll just call it Bill. It'd be nice if we could just do this and then print that plus that, and then just change this as we needed it. But if we go to compile it, it doesn't like that, because you can't print anything more than one thing at a time. So what we have to do is we have to add to it first, so we do the variable VA0 equal to itself. And then this is where we add the bill. Oh, you can't have spaces here either. I always forget that. And then we have to get rid of it here. So what we have, oh, it's supposed to be plus, two quotes. So now what we should have is we should have six characters. It should be 000, and then the number, which might be 001, or it could be 100, it could be anything after that, and then the word bill. So let's see what, how it works. So if we convert this over to the string, you can see that we have our six digits so that it always lines up perfectly, and then bill comes second. In the next video, we'll show how we'll change that to the different slider name. But in some cases, you might want the build to come first, like give the name of the thing, and then. So you would hope that you could just do this. Put the bill in front of it. And add it to it. 
from Bill E. Okay, so let's go ahead and debug this. Now you're going to see one of the strangest things I've ever seen in coding. Bill is still at the end. The way Nexion works, whenever you have something and you're adding something to it, it doesn't matter the order on this side. It will always put the added thing at the end. There's no way to not have that happen. The only other way would be to create a third variable, make it assigned to Bill, and then add VA0 text to that variable. But for our case, it really doesn't matter. We can just, we'll just take the first six will be the value, and the second four is going to be the item that we're going to, that sent the value to us. So it should work out just fine. I don't know how informative this video is, but hopefully it'll help going into the next one. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.